G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam, and in today's video I'm going to show you how to use the AMP script function build row set from XML, allowing you to read and use XML files inside of Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So as always, let's start off on the Salesforce Marketing Cloud documentation page. Now for build row set from XML, we have to specify three ordinals in our function. The first ordinal is going to be the XML that we're using in the function. The second ordinal is going to be the path that we specify to build our row set from. And the third ordinal is a flag field, a boolean field, which will identify if we want to return an empty row if an error occurs, true or false. Now the great thing about this documentation is if we scroll down, we'll find ourselves with some great code examples. So no better way to learn how to use this platform than to jump into Marketing Cloud and try it out for ourselves. Okay, so I've jumped into Marketing Cloud and the first thing I'm going to do is build myself a development platform on a landing page. To start off with, I'm going to make myself a nice HTML content block over in Content Builder. See my content block here is called my Cloud Page Testing and I've got the ID for this content block. I'll copy that ID and I'm going to jump across into our Cloud Pages, jump into one of my collections and let's make ourselves a brand new Cloud Page. So I'll show you this works, we'll go to Landing Page and we'll call this one XML Testing. I'll go next and blank. Once we build this page, we're going to make a nice simple AMP script function which will look up the content block that we just copied, allowing us to modify the content block and republish it really quickly so we can do some rapid development. So I'll drop out that content block and simply type in percent equals content block by ID. You can see a little browse option pops up there, but we already have it copied, so quotation marks, paste, and close off that function. And so now when I paste this page, it's going to publish the content of that content block. So I'll jump into my content block here and let's modify the content just to make sure it's working. I'll just say it's working and save. Now hopefully once we publish this page, we'll see that it has the word working. Perfect. So as you can see, we've now got the word working coming through. So I'll publish this page, which means I can just click on my blue link here to launch a cloud page. And now if I want to, I can go into my content block here, modify the content block, save it really quickly, go back to my uh, cloud page and press F5 and it refreshes straight away with some really quick development. So now that we have our development code block ready to go, let's jump back onto our documentation and we'll start looking at the syntax. So straight away we can see our syntaxes here, so let's copy that and drop it back into our content block. We'll also want to use some of that test XML we found. So on our documentation, if we scroll down, we'll find an example piece of XML. So let's copy that for ourselves and jump back onto our document here. Let's specify a AMP script code block and write out that XML. So a nice simple AMP script code block, and we're going to say set at XML will be equal to double quotation marks and paste the XML. Now we can use double quotation marks in this code because the actual XML itself contains single quotation marks, which means you won't have a quotation mark conflict. So with our XML set as at XML, with that script there, let's make sure it's working by just simply returning the XML value by going XML equals, and we'll say percent percent equals V, and let's simply print out that XML onto our cloud page. So we'll save the page and let's refresh it. Great, so we do in fact have some XML coming through before our row set value, so it's definitely working. So back in our content block, let's now try and pass the XML with our build row set function here. So let's copy that and we're going to put it into our M script code block. Let's say set at rows is equal to the row set we're going to build. Now the XML that we're building is of course going to be this at XML value, the first ordinal. We're then of course going to need to specify the second ordinal, which is going to be the structure to which to build our row set from. We can see here the XML structure is root. Within root there is a flights option or a flights object. So our structure is going to be in quotation marks root slash flight. Perfect. And for our third ordinal, if we check our documentation, it's going to be our flag if we want to return an erroneous or empty cell if an error occurs. I'm going to say yes to return an empty row set just in case. So for my last ordinal, I'll put one. That's going to produce our rows. Now we can check to see if that's worked by doing XML rows and we can print out the row set. So let's do row count and let's count how many rows are in the row set. 
and hopefully we find three rows for this XML. So I'll save my content block, go back to my cloud page and refresh. XML rows equals three, perfect. So we have our XML content and we can now see there are in fact three flight objects in it. Let's now cycle through those three objects and print them out into a table. To do this, we can of course use our for loop. So we'll say for at i is equal to one, two, the length of course of our rows, which will be the row count of rows. We are going to do something and then next i. Within our loop, we're gonna to wanna to cycle through and get the values. Now, when it comes to our XML file here, there's a few values you want. For this flight data, we're gonna to want to know the origin, the destination, and I'm guessing this here is the price. So let's print out those three values. Within our loop here, we're going to want to get those three values. We can do so using our field and rows function. So to start with, we can say the at origin is going to be equal to set at origin will be equal to what? What's well, gonna be the field of the row. The row of course will be rows, row number i, and the field we're gonna return is gonna be the field of the origin. Now the trick here with XML files is it's not just the field called origin, it's actually an attribute. So we have to, or uh, we have to do an attribute field, which is a underscore att added, onto the actual name of that attribute. So origin underscore att. Do the same thing down here again, this time for destination. So destination will be destination dot att. And now for the price, we can go set at price is gonna be equal to, now for this one, it's actually gonna be a different value altogether. Because the price sits in between the flight object here, so flight opens and then closes, it's gonna be the value of flight. So we just type in value. Just like that. That should be our three values that we need to print out. So to print them out, let's then do a output line. We'll go concat and we'll say in our concat function, the origin is gonna be equal to, and then our origin value. And then we'll do a pipe break. And then we'll say that the destination is gonna be equal to, of course, our destination value. And finally, our price is gonna be equal to our at price value. Just like that, and for good measure, let's also do a line break, just like that. So now we should get our three rows that pop out there, cycling through the for loop one, two, three times, producing the origin, destination, and price as we see here, it should see uh, NYC, LEX and SEA coming at 100, 200 and 500. All right, so with those in mind, let's now print this out. We'll go save and jump onto our cloud page and press F5. Perfect, there is our three rows of our XML coming out. So as you can see, using the build row set from XML is a really simple function to use to allow you to read and use your XML data in Marketing Cloud. Now, if you want some more practice, if you've already done the XML sample in the documentation here, what you can do is jump onto Google and type in something like sample XML file. You find yourself an example page like this W3Schools one. You can click into this one here and you can see some XML files you can try out for yourself. If you like, try the simple XML file, the CD catalog, plant or food catalogs. You can see for yourself there's some great example XML files for you to copy and paste and try out for yourself. And I hope you've enjoyed this quick AMP script learning today. If you have, then please let me know with a comment and a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you are notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.